All right. Welcome to the World Pope's Worldwide Prayer Network. Uh, Father Joe and the interns reporting live tonight from the same screen this time. So, uh, Father Joe, what do you have there? Yeah, we're thrilled to be here. Uh, this is our third of three, third of three. Maybe a few folks are going to catch the first few minutes of the debates and then hop over to us. Um, I think I can guarantee we'll have a friendlier tone, probably, than, um, than you maybe heard over on that other station. Uh, of course, Vinny back with us again. Vinny, good to have you. Yeah, thanks. Hey, guys. And he's our local Milwaukee boy, so he knows this place well. He's been to multiple Marquette-based schools. So, Cecilia, you hail from? The South, Texas. Austin. Austin, okay. Texas. Okay. So, hello, Texas. You're a, a big chunk of North America. <laughs> and we're thrilled to have you represented um, from beautiful St. Louis, Missouri, of course. So, um, we are happy to be here. Uh, yeah, we're continuing our little series on uh, heart exercise, heart exercise, where we're trying to make some connections of Ignatian spirituality, so St. Ignatius, the writer of the spiritual exercises, and then also sacred heart devotion, which is uh, one of our core principles of the Pope's Prayer Network. Even the word core, that is a heart connection, anybody know? Four. Like the four center? Like, four means heart. But heart, yeah. Oh, the yeah. center. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, oh yeah, you're talking about Latin. I, I thought you were talking oh, about sorry. just the word, C-O-R-E, <laughs> right. but it comes from the Latin core. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, core Jesu in Latin. And um, yeah, we're kind of just going to lead everybody in a little reflection here with a little friendly discussion among us as well. Um, tonight we'll be looking at our spiritual top ten, spiritual top ten. So... Yeah, when I was in college, I watched a lot of ESPN Sports Center. I still watch it every now and then. And uh, yeah, I'd say my favorite part has been the, the top 10 lists. So, at the very end of the show, they give you the, you know, the 80 yard touchdowns, the slam dunks. More broadly, we have, you know, top 10 movies of the 1990s, for instance, the decade that was the greatest ever in my teenage years. We also could have, I don't know, top 10 uh, IPAs or top 10 cheap red wines or something. So, you know, there's something we're just kind of drawn to, like these kind of simple, short lists, and even the Ten Commandments, right? So ten. You've got ten fingers, easy to kind of count them that way. Well, we're going to reflect on spiritual top tens. So, moments you felt close to God, moments of grace, blessing, gratitude. You know, and drawing on St. Ignatius Loyola, this, this deep sense that we can actually cultivate grateful hearts, that yes, we want gratitude, yes, we want to receive God's blessings, but in a certain way, we can actually get better at that by doing spiritual exercise, according to Ignatius, um, making a habit of gratitude, not just occasional, but something that we can spend time each day doing. And then these spiritual top tens, we really want those sort of imprinted on our hearts, you know. Great Jesuit who wrote a book, Tattoos on the Heart, right? Like, we want these things really stamped on us so that, especially during tough times, we have something we can turn to uh, for help and grace. And, yeah, Cecilia and Vinny, we were talking about this a little bit earlier yeah. today. Um, we talked about maybe some of these biblical top ten moments. So, you know, I think different characters in the Bible, we can almost sketch out their spiritual top tens. Any of those that stand out to you? Some. Yeah, I I think of Mary, and specifically the one moment I think of is when um, at the wedding at Cana, in that miracle where Jesus approached her and said, "Woman," and called his own mother "woman." But I think she recognized in that moment the divinity and the promise that God had kept to her and her yes, and was there to witness his very first miracle that we have recorded in the bible so it's kind of like one of those moments like it's like whoa like god's true to his word and he is doing what he says he will so i think that's mary's one of her top 10 amen yeah i was kind of thinking like i mean with the fire in front of us i think uh the whole resonation of like the burning bush and moses and how um 
when that kind of came to him, I think, uh, and he was able to like present it to um, the people that were following him and everything. I think, I mean, that was just a profound moment where um, he said yes to God, and it was kind of like a revealing of um, like God and his life and the disciples' life. So, yeah, that was really powerful too. Yeah, and I think in these examples we just mentioned, how you know, in a certain way, often enough, like a spiritual high can actually have a sort of close connection with spiritual low. So maybe Mary for a moment feels like she's kind of being pushed aside by her son or sort of called out by her son almost. And yet moments later, it's this great blessing of, you know, hundreds of people at this wedding sharing in this celebration. Uh, yeah, Moses certainly had his own ups and downs. Uh, in the desert, you know, maybe some of us feel like we're kind of wandering through a desert these days. And yet also this great trust of like, okay, God is gonna be here. Even this sort of hunger or dryness is gonna make me maybe even more receptive to the grace that's coming. Just did a quick tech check. I think we're, we're good to go for uh, all of our friends out there in Instagram land. So spiritual top 10. If you have, um, you know, a little piece of paper, um, you know, if you wanna, Jot down a few of your own, even if you want to sort of send those in to us, we're happy to, you know, share a few with uh, the wider world. Um, I think we all took a little time on this er earlier today to kind of get ready for it. Um, I have one that I have tacked up on my bulletin board in my room. So you know, I've done this a couple times, but still find it fruitful to kind of revisit. Um, oh, I don't know. What if we each share one or two and... Yeah. Maybe kind of help help other folks maybe stir their own hearts uh, yeah. through this exercise. Yeah, so I literally never heard of spiritual top 10. And I thought it was such a profound exercise because you have high moments in your life that you don't necessarily realize are spiritual until after the fact. Um, and so one of mine was my confirmation. And it was like this huge moment where I like, I was choosing that. And that was God saying, Celia, this is where you are. This is where you're supposed to be. I'm here. You're entrusting me with your life. And I'm not going to steer you wrong. And that's like, I'm not a crier at like events and such. And I was sobbing. <laughs> I was sobbing as I walked <laughs> up to the bishop and got confirmed. And then another one was the birth of my baby brother. So he is seven years younger than me. So I really do remember when he was born. And he was born on Valentine's Day. And um, I remember we had asked my parents, I was like four at the time when we started asking my parents, we asked them for two years. We we're like, we want another brother, like sibling, we want a brother. And we prayed and prayed and prayed that God would send us a little brother. And then one day my mom pulled me into her room and she goes, Celia, I'm pregnant. I was like, what? You mean I'm gonna have a sibling? And then we hid it from my dad till Father's Day and we broke the news. So it wasn't that long, it was like a month. Um, and, and we told him, and it's just a beautiful thing. We prayed for a happy, healthy little baby boy. We prayed for it to be a boy. And like, God genuinely like answered all our prayers. He was born healthy. My mom was like a late gestational age. So she was considered like a higher risk pregnancy and he was healthy. There were no issues. He came on time. Um, and he, it was a boy and that's what we had prayed for because I'm, I have two older sisters, so we all wanted a brother. <laughs> so those are two of my top ten, so. Love it, love it. Um, any of you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, I, I can have it on the one. Um, I think a huge one for me was when I was, like, deciding between colleges. Um, I think as I was going through, like, decision process, like, thinking about it through, like, freshman, sophomore year of high school, I was kind of thinking, like, man, like, I really got to start preparing this, like starting with ACT prep and everything. Um, grades were a huge focus and extracurriculars, and then it got time like second semester junior year where it was like, all right, I got to start like focusing, honing in on like what I really want out of like a college experience. Um, and when it came time, like the application started my senior year of college or senior year of high school. Um, I don't know, I really had to decide like what I wanted for my own values, like what was like the best fit for me, and kind of had to look inward and and see like where could I really see myself and what was like the cultural fit that, that was best for me and, and that um, was uh, that had a lot of prayer behind it too um, 
I found that like my parents and I would usually pray together. Um, just to kind of see like like public, private school, like versus um, like small environment, big environment. Um, like what my major I wanted to be in, like the academic rigor and, and the types of teachers that I'd have. And um, I, I happily ended up in Marquette, and I, I really like it. But um, yeah, I think at, at the time it was it was a really tough spiritual kind of like discernment for me between. Um, what I really wanted out of myself and what I wanted for the future, but um, yeah, wishes uh, definitely came true. I think in a really good place now. So yeah. good news. Yeah, just to highlight a couple of your highlights, if I may. Um, you know, Vinny's discernment. You know, so this is another uh, kind of key word for Saint Ignatius Loyola. That process of reflection, prayer, trying to follow God's plan for me, and yeah, Vinny. Fruitful it's been for you, how much you brought to this school as well. Um, you know, fraternity life, campus ministry, your new part time job, um, among other things. So, fruit of discernment. And then, Cecilia, I don't know, maybe that gift of life is one, mm -hmm. one thing. Um, so, October is Respect for Life Month, a special time of honoring Mary as yeah. her mother. And yeah, praying for, you know, even kind of joking about, you know, wanting little brother and hey mom and dad what a great gift that would be um, and then yeah that blessing being shared in your family what's his name James and James if you're out there you're a blessing for your sister <laughs> so. uh, yeah a couple for me I'll point to my ordination mass um, so I was ordained nine and a half years ago so I don't know if I'm still a young priest or not, I'm kind of like on the borderline, you know, somewhere in there, John X priest. But that ordination mass, just having family and friends there, uh, Jesuit brothers, you know, guys around my age, Jesuit mentors. This one little moment that comes to mind, so there's a, a blessing, so all the priests there bless the, the new priests, including our guys in the nursing home, including guys in wheelchairs. So they're being wheeled up by younger Jesuits and then some of these guys who have literally given their lives in the missions, in the classrooms, they're now in their upper 80s, early 90s, and are now placing their hands out to bless me as a new priest. Um, another one that comes out in my mind is um, being at World Youth Day. I was in Madrid, Spain in 2011. Anybody who's been to these, I mean, it's fun, it's exhausting. There's just wall-to-wall -wall people speaking dozens of languages you don't understand and there's this big rainstorm one night so we're all gathered on this basically this sort of abandoned airport airstrip and we're out there we're praying there's this huge rainstorm so everybody is all of a sudden soaking wet and freezing cold and then Pope Benedict comes out with a monstrance and is holding the Eucharist places it on the altar he himself kneels down and then literally like a million people kneel at once. And just, you can hear a pin drop. Everybody who was miserable and freezing five minutes ago, now all eyes on Christ, all gathered in prayer. Um, again, this moment of being both exhausted but also really inspired at the same time. That's yeah, wow. so, that's deep. Yeah, that is, I, I, I want to go to this. Oh, yeah. And I've been to a world you say in Poland, and so it's like, I know exactly that feeling where you're like exhausted, you're like so excited, you don't know what's going on, but you know everything that's going on, and then it's just like, like, you just have those moments. <laughs> but that's an incredible, like, millions of people. Such a huge community, like, you're, yeah. it's just so profound, I don't know. It's so like quiet, a, all at once. Special, like, emotional. You never emotion. think of a crowd of a million yeah like being just so, being so, in unison, so yeah. quiet and in unison yeah it's like the biggest like i don't know what i was gonna say yeah yeah <laughs> it's like I the mean, biggest it um it's like a like a flash mob but like a silent yeah. flash mob. right right yeah it's flash mob for christ yeah yeah like right religious flash mob <laughs> right. it occurs to me we forgot to pray now we're talking about spiritual things but we are the pope's prayer network so it probably doesn't hurt um, yeah. One of you want to lead us or come up with something? Yeah. You, you can tell this is live. We haven't tested <laughs> everything out. Um, I can open us some prayer. Okay. 
All right, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and all the gifts you've given us and all the gifts that you intend to give to us. We ask that you come and bless us through all the things we do and you bring us back to you even if we're lost. We entrust our lives to you and we ask that this is brought to you through the intercession of Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Let's not forget to pray for the Pope's intention this month. Anybody? I know. Vinny, do you know it? Um, Isn't it for lay women in the church? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We are interns. I mean, uh, I, I, I feel like we should, we should probably yeah. know that. <laughs> All the lay women, we salute you. We're grateful to have one here and for lay men as well. We appreciate all the gifts they bring to the table right. and all lay people in general. I'm going to try to pull up um, Servant any, leaders. Let's see, any comments? I don't, exactly I don't kind of think there's any comments about really this. Well. Okay. If you have comments, if you have a little short uh, something from your own top 10 list that you want to pull up, share with us. We're happy to say a few words about that. <laughs> You just want to keep up your little journal, uh, keep up with your own cup of hot cocoa. Um, maybe you're sitting by a fire. That's okay, too. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So, so Father Joe, like, I have my top ten list. Yes. You know, I colored it kind of. I don't think people can see it. You can kind of see, like, some. Huh? Maybe not really. Mm -hmm. But I wrote it all down. And I did some drawings, but... I mean, you said you keep yours pinned to your bulletin board, yeah. but where, where would other people put theirs? It's like, I don't have a bulletin board. Oh my gosh. Vinny, any, Vinny, are you like artistic? Do you have good handwriting or, or maybe not? Um, I'm not artistic or have good handwriting <laughs> at all, <laughs> but uh, no, I do love post-it notes. Like I do, I keep like, like motivational post-it notes like around my desk Ooh. and like just around uh, like my calendar and stuff. So. Um, I, I mean, especially from like a spiritual perspective, like I have like little spiritual quotes around it too. So, um, I mean, that's always been big for me. Just so, like little daily reminders. Mm -hmm. It's kind of huge. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Yeah. Amen. Um, yeah. My handwriting, not great, uh, but you know, I did write it out. I do have it on my bulletin board. Also, I, when I first wrote it out, I did not number them and it was kind of fun actually to go back and then sort of put the numbers in and any top 10 is also part of the fun is like, okay, what, what's number 11 and 12? You know, like what's kind of right on the edge, almost there. What if like numbers three and four maybe could be flipped? Like, or even over time, it may be some of these things, there's, there's more things added or things move up higher on your list as, you know, you grow and develop yourself. Cecilia, are you, you're, you're sort of artistic, would you say? Yeah. Okay. One option, some folks will literally video. frame these. Like, you know, I've done this on some retreats, and people will say, yeah, I framed mine, I have it in my room, I try to look at it every day or close to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like to say too, you especially need this when your life is like a bad country song. <laughs> so, what do I mean There's when I say, bad your, life, your life is like a bad country song. You know, There's it's that morning. Ones. That very same morning when your pickup truck won't start, <laughs> your hound dog done died, and your sweetheart don't love you no more. I didn't know you could sing. Yeah, that's, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, dang. You should join a men's choir. There's, there's a lot of trust here. So, Okay, on those days, that's when you need this list, right? Like, that's when you need to sort of throw your bucket into the gratitude well, and then, you know, kind of like pull the chain link thingy and like, pull it up okay mm -hmm. there is this way you know we can keep going back to these graces and they get renewed even saint ignatius says we should savor the graces you know almost like delicious food you can kind of like eat it slow you know or uh, you know go back for one more little bite a little later on so if you're artsy go for it if you're not artsy hey handwrite it uh put it in your wallet take a photo with your phone so you can find it and I feel like, too, like, your spiritual top ten does not have to be, like, 
these elated moments. Like, I know in mine, there's a death of, like, a really, like, close friend. And that was a spiritual moment because I found God through the grieving process. And even though I was super, like, I was not in, like, I was so sad. Like, I was depressed. I was just, like, crying because I just, like, was coping. It was, like, a first big loss of my life when I was, like, young. And it's, like, as much as I miss her today, I look back and I realize how much closer I was brought to God through the presence of her life and the gifts she gave me and just realizing that I might not have planned that, but that's where God wanted me. And so it's, like, God gives you the gifts, and it's, I don't know, I just feel like not to be shut off to what you sh should have on your spiritual top ten, because it's not happy. And it's one of those things where it's, like, you only know where you are going. Like, I shoot, I'm trying to think of this quote. I saw it, I had it on a pin once, like a writing pin. And it was, like, this lady on a bicycle, and it was, like, you don't know, like, you, like, you can only see the path when you look back on it. Yeah, like, you don't know where you've been and, like, what you've done until you've completed the action. So it's, like, my college experience is not done. Like, I can't tell you about my full college experience until it is over. So. Yeah, yeah I, I have a quote that's kind of similar to that. It's, like, uh, how do you, do you guys know how you would make God laugh? How? Um, you tell him what your plans are for the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically, I, I don't know. I feel like that always has resonated with me just because, um, like, I feel like uh, for my spiritual top ten at least, it, it's definitely a mix, like Cecilia was saying, like, of, of good and bad experiences just because you kind of find the light in the darkness a little bit through, like, the really tough experiences where you're like, wow, I can really use God. Like Father Joe was saying, like, pulling out those, like, times of gratitude when you're, like, going through something that's really tough or, like, suffering. I, I think those are the times that the spiritual top ten is most useful, but... Um, yeah, especially like when thinking about the future, like when I'm like getting anxious for a test or something, it's like, like as long as you've prepared, as long as you've like followed God, as long as you've like tried your best to be the best version of yourself, like the rest is just pointed up mm -hmm. to God's hands and having faith. Yeah, and too, sometimes like looking back, sometimes you see it in the moment, like, wow, this is a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Other times, you know, maybe it's sort of you have to look back a little bit. And again, let's think about some scriptural examples like uh, St. Peter for, for instance you know we see him with this real closeness to Jesus he is called as the first disciple goes on to be the first pope of the church and this is a guy who's definitely like not just perfect from day one he's, he's clumsy he says the wrong thing he's self-centered sometimes doesn't really get what's going on you know, and yet in a certain way, you can look back and see the mercy of God, the closeness of Jesus. Um, Peter, who nails it and says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Okay, then 30 seconds later, he's telling Jesus, yeah, but you're not going to have the cross, like, you know, they're going to have to get through me if they're going to get to you. Jesus says, hey, you know, buddy, blockhead, like, you don't understand what I'm trying to do here. So, you know, this, these kind of highs and lows that can exist side by side, but, yeah, sometimes it's sort of, as we look back, getting a little distance so we can maybe see the grace more fully. Yeah. Yeah. What other topics would you guys think you would include in, like, a spiritual top ten? Like, maybe not necessarily, like, maybe diving more into, like, the goods and the bads. Like, like I don't know, I was kind of talking about, like, times of, like, like thinking about the future too much or something like what, what would you say like are some topics or categories that you could put in, in that bucket I feel like there's this one moment so after I graduated high school I worked at um, a Catholic summer camp called the Pines um, and my first summer working out there I was just like kind of like on their general service crew but um, during like staff training or it might have been in the first like few weeks I was just like it was like a transitional period and I feel like a lot of people kind of hit rough spots when it's like a big 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 change in your life and I was like getting prepared to move 1200 miles away from my parents like a lot was going on in my brain and you know I wasn't 
necessarily like mega close with the sacraments, but they had staff, like all staff at a rate or like staff adoration where it's like just staff only, no campers, just staff for this mass, no campers, because it was always after they had gone to bed. And I walked into this chapel, it's this little wooden chapel um, in this like tiny wood forest. It's literally so beautiful. And they just had like kind of candles and then some spotlights on the monstrance. It probably, monstrance, it probably fits like a hundred people at most. And I just remember sitting there and like, praying to God, like, God, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, but I'm giving this to you, and, and I was like, if you want me to go be a nun, like, I'll go be a nun, just, like, tell me, and I'll prepare my heart, like, if you want me to go to married life, just, like, let me know, like, I, I just want to do what you want me to do, and, I'm like sitting there and all he says is like that's not what I have in mind for you my dear like just telling me that and like it was like five minutes of just like this like intense prayer but it was so ordinary it's just like your everyday like I didn't go to adoration that often and it's just like you know and most most times I go to adoration I'm just like okay like this is great I'm just hanging out like nothing's really happening but it's like those moments you least expect him to be there for you and I like walked out and it's like I was like I just walked in and then I walked right back out because like it's like okay thanks God you told me what I need to do like this is great like perfectly answered yeah (laughs) so I don't know I feel like it's just like your everyday task God like can speak to you in those moments yeah kind of like looking for direction a little bit yeah yeah I don't know. Do you have any Wonderful. moments where, like, you've had been in everyday life, and then God's just been like, yo, here's this. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it at you. Yeah. Um, any, anything come to mind for you in that category? Um, every day, I don't know. I, I feel like, well, for, like, my spiritual life, like, I'm not one of those people that necessarily, like, prays on the way to class, but I'll always be, like, trying to, like, find God in, in everything on the way to class like even in the little things like whether it's like positive negative like whether it's like trying to teach me a lesson or maybe like just show me some good and make me smile give me some joy for the day um I don't know whether it's like in nature and there's like a little squirrel that runs across my path and it's like cute on the way to class kind of like makes me <laughs> smile or like it's like a like a fallen leaf that comes like right down in front of me that I'm like oh man like maybe I'm, there's a change that's about to come like I don't know just trying to find that like spiritualism in every day I think uh that's kind, of, that's kind of how I have, like, some spiritual top tens. Like, maybe in those, like, small things that you can find, God. I don't know. Those can be really special moments yeah. for me, too. You know, Father Joe, I don't want If you don't want to share it, you don't have to share it. But how did you discern the priesthood? Like, I don't think I've ever asked yeah, you that. I feel question. like yeah. that could have had moments of, like, just, like, everyday life where you might have picked up little pens or it like, could have been, like, a yeah. whoa. Like, sure. teach you, like, a ton of bricks. Great question, and I think we're coming close to the end of our time here, so maybe this will be a hook for next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To come back. We are wrapping up. This is our third of three. You can find us on Instagram TV and YouTube, I'm pretty sure, if you want to catch yeah. the previous episodes. Coming up, uh, also take a peek at our feed. We have some little Friday videos that you might enjoy. We are likely going to do a little short Advent retreat, probably early in Advent, so come back around and take a look at that. Other Pope's Prayer, cool things folks should know about. We're moving offices. Oh yeah. the same building, but we're moving offices. So it's kind of exciting. New space. So pray for us. We'll pray for you if you're moving offices or moving just in general for your safety and well-being. Changes in life. Yeah. Yeah. Life changes. Even if you're not experiencing life changes, like, we're still praying for you. We're praying for every intention you send us. Amen. Absolutely. And check me out, Joe Laramie SJ on Instagram. Check out this man, at Vinny Soul. Yeah. yeah. This young lady. CVG33. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Okay. Team Instagram, thank you. And until next time. Until next time. Yeah, that's (laughs) right. Okay. Peace. Amen. Thank you.